Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how to roll a dice on an actual quantum computer. Before you watch this video, make sure that you watch my previous video where I explain what you need to run your own quantum computing programs on an actual quantum computer. Okay, so a dice is a pretty simple thing. Once you roll it, it just gives you a random number between 1 and 6. Doing this on a classical computer would look something like this. We have a function that just returns us a random number between 1 and 6. And so if we run this here, we can see that this is exactly what it does. If we run it another time, we get a different result. Doing this on a quantum computer is actually a lot more difficult. And the reason for that is that quantum computing today is basically at the stage that classical computing was decades ago, when the computers were filling up entire rooms and the programming languages were addressing individual um, bits. And so basically this is what we have to do now on quantum computers. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna import um, Qiskit. If you don't know what Qiskit is, please watch my previous video. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define the number of qubits. So let's just pick three. And so now after we've done that, we're going to create a circuit. So the circuit is basically um, an object that holds um, our number of qubits and on which we can apply operations that will manipulate and change our qubits. And at the end, we're going to be measuring those qubits. So now that we've created the circuit, we're going to be adding um, measurements. So this is going to then measure the qubits and it's going to give us a result. So this is what the circuit that we've created um, looks like. So we have three qubits, Q0, Q1, and Q2. Um, and then we apply uh, measurements onto those qubits. So those are the block black boxes. Um, and then the result of those measurements, they are brought to C, which basically just represents um, the classical output that we're going to be um, printing um, on the screen. Now, the next step is to visualize what this little program um, would give us if we run it on a quantum computer. And for this, I'm going to use a quantum simulator. So a thing that simulates the quantum computer. And we're only gonna run the program on an actual quantum computer at the end. So make sure to stick towards the end of the video. So this thing called a uh, Quasim simulator, that is something that simulates a quantum computer up to a certain number of qubits. And it also includes errors and everything um, that basically a real quantum computer would do. And this just makes our lives a lot easier when we are writing programs and we're basically just testing at this stage. Now in the execute function, I pass in the circuit that I've created. I pass in the backend, so the simulator, and then I tell it the number of shots that I want to use. So this basically means how many times I want to evaluate um, the quantum computer. And every time we evaluate the quantum computer, we get um, a result. So this is the result. Now I will just uh, visualize it. So this is our result. As you can see, we evaluated the quantum computer 1024 times. And every time the quantum re computer returned us uh, the result 000. So this is basically a very boring program since it always gives the same result. But now if we change it up a little bit, um, we will see the power of quantum computing. So if here, um, up here in the circuit definition, I add 
um, a gate. This gate is called a, a Hadamard gate, um, abbreviated here with H. So I put this Hadamard gate on every one of those qubits. And what this Hadamard gate does is it puts us into a superposition of zero and one. So now when we measure the qubits, it means that the qubit can either give us zero or one with a 50-50% probability. So if we now run our quantum computer 1024 times, we see that the result is now very different. We see that we basically get now um, eight different results ranging from 000 to 111. So these are all the possible different outputs um, and they all have roughly the same probabilities. Uh, the differences here are due to errors on the quantum computer, but um, on a perfect quantum computer, all of those probabilities would be the same. So now this is actually very useful for uh, what we want to do. Since we now get here basically eight different numbers with the same probability, which is precisely what a dice with eight sides would do. Um, so now all we have to do is we have to translate those results, so the 000, 000, 000, 001, and so on and so forth, into numbers from one to six. So now I will define a function and I will call it. Uh, I will call it quantum dice simulated. Now into this function, I will basically just put exactly what I've just written here. I will just um, copy it in here. I will first define another function called um, random num. And now I will copy and paste um, the code from the previous cell. So now all I have to do is I have to change the number of shots because when I evaluate this function, I basically just want to get one of those results. Um, I don't want to get multiple of them, so I have to change it to one. So now I have to take care of um, the two extra results that we get. And this is really simple. Um, first, let us translate the result into an integer number. So what this does is it translates the bit strings here into integers. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, so on and so forth. And so now all we have to do is we have to exclude zero and seven. And I will just do this with a very simple um, while statement. So what I'm doing now is that I evaluate this function. I get a number um, ranging from zero to seven. If that number is zero or seven, then I rerun the whole thing until I get a different number. So this basically just makes sure that instead of getting eight different numbers, we're now getting six different numbers. Okay, so now let's test this program. Okay, so now you can see our program has run successfully. Um, now let's run it again and see if we get different numbers this time. And you can see we get different numbers every time and they are between one and six. So now we're almost done. Now all we have to do is we have to translate this program to use a quantum computer. So let's start by um, copying and pasting it. And let's get rid of the simulated. And let's put here as a variable the backend that we want to use, which is going to be the uh, quantum computer that we're going to access. And the first thing we have to do is we have to get the provider. 
Now we just change the backend to the quantum computer. Okay, so now we just have to load up our IBM account and then we can run our program. Now it's just giving me a warning because I've loaded the account uh, up before. And so now we can just go over to the IBM Quantum Experience and check out which quantum computer is currently not in use. And we can see that the one in Essex has zero jobs. So I'm just gonna use this one. And now I just run the program. Okay, so we have our result. The quantum computer gave us a six. And if we go over to the IBM quantum experience and we refresh the page, we see here in the bottom that we have successfully completed a program that was run on the IBM computer in Essex. And as you can see here, indeed, our result is six. And so this is how you roll the dice on an actual quantum computer. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe for more quantum computing related content.